All right, so let's talk about your church website. Now, my guess is that your church website has probably been the bane of your existence for a really long time, right? I don't know about you. Uh, I've had a tons of different iterations of my church website, and I'm telling you, it's just always kind of a frustration, right? So one of the biggest questions that I get asked is what exactly should my church website include? So that's what we're going to be diving in today. We're going to talk about five things that you need to have on your website in order to attract new visitors. So let's dive into this video, and as we talk about what should a church website include coming up. Hey, what's up, y'all? Welcome back. My name is Chris Abbott, but all my friends just call me Abbo. And if we're meeting for the first time, uh, welcome to this channel. We actually, we literally built this channel just to be able to help equip pastors and church leaders to be more effective using social and digital ministry. So what we want to do in this video is we want to break down some of the things that you need to have on your church website, right? There's a lot of material out there and a lot of people have website shame, right? Where, uh, I don't know if you guys have ever been there where someone asks like, hey, what your church website is? And you're like, oh, I don't have one. Uh, actually, we're in the middle of rebuilding it, right? You have a website, you just don't actually want to tell people about it because you're so ashamed of it. Trust me, I've been there, okay? So uh, that's why we made this video, is we want to talk about five of the things that you need to have uh, on your church website. So let's dive in. All right, now an important caveat, I personally believe that your church website should exist for one reason and one reason only, and that is to turn website visitors into Sunday morning visitors, All right? So I believe that's the only reason that a church website should exist. It's the only reason it's there. It's we want to use your website to attract people to your Sunday morning services. Now, I believe the best way to take care of your members is to create a second website that's specifically just built for your members, all right? I actually heard about this idea from Brady Shear. I think he got it from Church on the Move in Tulsa, right? But basically you go create like a journeychurch.info site that's literally just information for all of the people inside your church. So if you have a women's conference coming up and you want people to register for it, right? In your announcements, you say, hey, want more info? Go to journeychurch.info. Right? This is a great way to create a place where you can have calls to action, you can have people registering for small groups and all the information that you need to have for the people inside your church. But I believe your main website should be specifically for people that don't go to your church and the whole thing should be built so that we turn website visitors into Sunday morning visitors. So with that caveat, let's dive in and let's talk about the five things that every single church website should include. All right, number one, location and service times. Now, I'm telling you, I know that this sounds really, really basic and it sounds really obvious right? But you would be shocked at how many churches overlook this. And one of the biggest mistakes that churches make is they'll actually bury their location and service times on other pages, right? Maybe on the about page, the contact page, or the new here page. You don't want to do that. You actually want to have this on your home page, and you want to make this right below the header, right? So on your header, whether it's a video header uh, or an image header, right below that, you want to literally have location and service times, and you want to make sure that you simply post those. Because uh, according to Gray Matter Research, 43% of people who are on a church website are there for locations and service times, right? So don't turn a yes into a no. They've already decided that they want to visit your church, right? Four out of 10 people on your church website have already decided they want to visit your church and they went on there for location and service times. Don't make them hunt for it because I promise if they have to click to any other page, they're not going to find it. You don't want to even make them scroll to the bottom of your homepage. Make sure to put it up top right below the header, locations and service times. And it's not a bad idea to have your location and have a button or a hyperlink that links to Google Map directions straight to your church. All right, number two is your navigation. Right now, here's the deal is uh, over 94% of people have said the number one reason they either trust or distrust a website is because of the design. If someone goes to your website and it looks janky or if the design just kind of doesn't make sense, they're going to hit the back button because they're not going to trust the website. Right. So one of the biggest ways that you can kind of clean that up is with your navigation. So we should be designing for a phone, which means you're probably going to have the navigation in the upper right hand corner and it's probably going to be a hamburger menu. Menu, right? That's where you see uh, those three lines that kind of look like a hamburger, right? Sometimes it might also have the word menu next to it, but we want to create our website to look like other websites. And if people are used to clicking on that hamburger menu in the top right, and then having a drop down menu for other sites, we want to do the same thing because we want our website to function like the sites that they're used to. So this is the best way to do it. Have a drop down menu in the top right hand corner. And again, we want to make sure that it looks good on a phone first. Over 70% of the web is visiting your website website on a phone. So we want to make sure our navigation looks really good. And the best way to do this 
this is to create a couple of main pages and then to have drop downs underneath. Now, here's a simple rule. You only want to have five to eight pages in your main navigation, and you only want to have one layer underneath that, right? So the average person is only going to click on 2.6 pages of your website, which means if you put things that they need more than two clicks away, they're never going to find it. So you're going to have five to eight pages in your navigation and only one layer of navigation underneath that. All right, does that make sense? All right, so if you like this video and you wanna learn more about how to use social media and technology to grow your church, make sure to hit the subscribe button and then make sure to hit that little bell notification because we're putting out brand new videos, fresh content every single day, five days a week. And if you hit that bell notification, you'll get notified every single time we drop a new video. All right, number three, online sermons. Now, here's what's crazy. There are over 10 million searches on Google every single year for online sermons, which means if you're not putting your online sermons on your website, then you're missing 10 million chances to share the gospel with people who are actively looking for it, right? As Wayne Gretzky famously said, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. So make sure that you are not only recording your online sermons, right, but then also putting them on your website so people can find them. All right, number four, contact info. Now, this is one of the biggest frustrations of people who are surveyed about church websites is that they have a really, really hard time finding contact information. So whether you have a chat bot on your website or maybe you have a contact page, it's really important to have something, especially at the bottom of your homepage, where people can get in touch with you, right? And the more ways you have, the better. Maybe you have a phone number, maybe you have a contact form, maybe you have an email, chatbot, maybe you have all four, right? But you want to make sure to have contact information on your homepage, on your about page, on your contact page, your new here page, your plan your visit page. You want to have it at all the high traffic pages on your website. Because again, the average person is only going to click on 2.6 pages of your website. So we don't want to bury the contact information. We want to put it on all the high traffic pages on our site. And lastly, number five is mobile first design. Now we mentioned this earlier, but over 70% of traffic on your website website is going to be from mobile. In fact, I pulled the Google Analytics on my church website and found that over 80% of people who are visiting our church website were visiting on either an iPhone or a tablet. So gone are the days where we want to build and design a website with the desktop in mind. We actually want to build it with a mobile first design, meaning we want to make sure that it looks good on a phone first. And our question should always be looking at it through the veil of how is this going to look on an iPhone, right? How is this going to look on an iPad? And then only after we've designed it for mobile and for phone, then we can make sure that it's also going to look good uh, for desktop. Again, one of the biggest mistakes that I see churches make all the time is you create stuff that looks great on uh, desktop, but then it looks kind of janky on a phone or it's a little bit messed up. You want to flip that. You want to make sure it looks good on a phone first, and then you can worry about it looking good on a desktop. All right. So now that we've talked about five different things that you need to have on your website and you're getting your online presence kind of beefed up, if you want to learn about about how to send more traffic and more people to your website and get more plan your visits, then go to churchgrowthagency.com. We've got a free video over there that's going to walk you through our system for exactly how to do that. So you can go to churchgrowthagency.com or click on the link in the description below. We'll see you soon.